And here we go. Welcome everybody to another episode of The Big Idea. I am your host, Dr. Jeffrey Hanna here at Clear Chiropractic in Spokane, Washington. And what do we talk about on The Big Idea? We talk about how a little bone where your neck meets the upper part of your spine has a very big impact in determining your health and quality of life in ways that you might never otherwise think is actually associated with that part of your body. And today, today's going to be a little bit more of a, a free, uh, free conversation here in terms of balance disorders and what we're going to be referring to as bandwidth kind of problems as it has to deal with processing information in your brain. Now, this one here, it's going to be a little bit more of a, a conceptual little talk, a little exploration. But I think that this is something that is really important for you to understand if you found yourself recently experiencing or diagnosed, again, not just, you know, necessarily of a, dis, a vestibular kind of disorder, but really anything that goes on in the body. And it's because a lot of times we think, oh, there was something that happened in the very recent period of time, and that is what is causing, producing our various symptoms, when in reality, it is usually a process that's been oncoming for a long period of time, and we just didn't realize what the early warning signs were. Now, as always, this is not a, a video that's going to be meant for uh, diagnostic purposes. And in some ways, you know, whether you are dealing with what's called a, basically vertigo, disequilibrium, dizziness, BPPV, aka crystals in your ear, um, maldebarkment syndrome, um, labyrinthitis, vestibular neuritis, vestibular migraine, from a large part of it, at least conceptually here, what's less important is not what the name of your particular diagnosis is, but what is the process that has actually led to those symptoms in the first place? And more importantly, what do you need to do about it? And as I said, what we're going to be talking about it is in terms of bandwidth, because this is an important concept that I'm Fortunately, I think that most people will understand, but maybe have never considered it in this particular um, type of conversation. So why don't we get into that pretty much right away? So firstly, the idea of bandwidth. What we are referring to is the processing capacity of your brain to be able to process information. So this is sometimes known as the general adaptive capacity or your stress capacity, your general adaptive potential, or what we're going to be referring it to here in this particular video is either your processing power or your bandwidth. And we're going to be using a few different analogies throughout the course of this um, course of this uh, little chat here to hammer this point home. So what is bandwidth first or processing power? Well, if you think of a computer or if you think of your the speed of your internet connection, it has to do with the ability to upload, download, and process information all at the exact same time. So as a very general rule, the more bandwidth that you have, the more stuff that is able to go on in your brain, in your body, at any given moment. And the less bandwidth that you have, the less that it is able to do. Another analogy that we'll use is that of a road. You could imagine that a road that is designed to be able to handle two, three, four lanes of traffic going one way and then two, three, four lanes of traffic going the other way is capable of having more vehicles travel on it at any given moment in time than a single or a, a two lane alternating highway. So this is what we are going to be referring to in terms of bandwidth. Now, everybody's bandwidth because of our genetics, because of our anatomy, because of life circumstances, is going to be different at different phases in our life. And it's not fair to necessarily compare your 100% to somebody else's 100%. So what we're going to be referring to when we talk about bandwidth is the concept of what is your true 100%. 
So let's start with a, a little story here. And the story begins when we are born. When we are born, again, through our genetics, anatomy, all that, we are born 100% perfect. And that is we are going to be having 100% of our normal bandwidth, our ability to learn, to be able to process, to be able to do all of the different things that go on in our body. So it changes a little bit, of course, as we grow up, but your brain is going to have approximately 100 billion nerve cells that are involved with processing all of the information. And they are coordinating to the tune of around, or excuse me, they're coordinating all of the neurological processes for about oh, 100 trillion cells in your body to the tune of 40 quadrillion bits of information every single second. These are most incomprehensible numbers is the short of it. I mean, still, the, the human brain is by far the most powerful supercomputer that nature has ever uh, devised. Now, yes, our computers are starting to get to the point where they're starting to um, compete with human consciousness, but this here still is capable of processing huge amounts of information. Now, what's also important to recognize and realize here is that 99.999995% of all of that information is unconscious. We are only consciously aware of about 0.000005% of all of the processes that are going on in our body, both the sensory information coming in through our eyes, through our ears, through our nose, through the skin, through touch, through movement, let alone all of the stuff that's going on on the inside in terms of coordinating our heart activities, our breathing activities, our reproductive activities, our digestive activities, our immune function, our hormone function regulation, our physiology, let alone all of the things that actually go involved in terms of coordinating all of the muscles in your body to be able to move function as we think of as a human being. So point B, that all of these processes to the tune again 40 quadrillion bits of information every single second the vast majority of this is going on in the background and I can't find the the primary source for this so it somewhat is questioned but there is a, an off quoted and I'm going to paraphrase it here um, statement that's attributed to a uh, Nobel Prize winner is a uh, researcher named Roger Sperry and it is that your brain spends about 90% of all of its energy in terms of processing balance and equilibrium information. Well, why is that? It's because we as human beings, we stand upright. We don't move on four limbs. We only move on two. And in order to juggle and maintain that balancing act, your brain needs a dedicated amount of um, separate processing power apart from all of the other things that go on in your body just to keep yourself upright. So this is what we're going to be referring to as bandwidth. Now, as it relates then to, well, what are some of the things that could potentially be affecting a person's bandwidth that in turn can lead to vestibular or balance kinds of conditions? Okay, well, let's consider a, a few different um, possibilities here. So a few possibilities. The first one is going to be mental stress and strain. I think that everybody out there can appreciate that if you are trying to do too many things all at once, well, what that's going to do is that's going to take up a certain amount of your bandwidth. And it can get to the point where it's like, okay, I just can't cope. I can't juggle all of this information. And again, we're talking about just the conscious kind of stuff here at the moment. We'll get to the unconscious in just a moment. But when we have a whole bunch of things going on in excess in our life, that is going to take from the normal processing power of your brain. Second possibility is going to be a chemical substance or a chemical irritant that may produce inflammation in the body. You ingested something, you um, um, inhaled something, 
you have something on your skin and it's producing a bit of an inflammatory response in your body. So now your brain says, uh-oh, we've got a problem. We need to be able to process that in order to maintain our physiology. And again, that's going to take up a certain amount of bandwidth that your body normally needs in order to perform its normal day-to-day -day functions. Now, the third one, this is one a lot of times people, I think, forget about. And this is the impact of physical causes that can decrease our bandwidth. And we're not just talking about pain or things like that. No, we're talking about things where you may have neural tension or dysfunction, dysregulation of the nerve system that physically dampens the processing capacity, not unlike having resistance in an electrical wire. Or if we may also use the analogy, consider the possibility here that you normally would have three lanes of traffic going one way, three lanes of traffic going the other way. But you've had some kind of a, a major storm, maybe a, a snowstorm or a flood or fallen trees, something like that. And what's happened is it has actually damaged two of the lanes going one way, two of the lanes going the other way. And what you've done then, in effect, is you've taken that road, you've taken that bandwidth, and you've significantly narrowed it down. Now, the way that this is going to play out in our bodies, and again, this is going to come around particularly as it relates to balance and coordination, it is that when you decrease the bandwidth, whether through mental, chemical, or physical sources of irritation, what it means is it means that your neurology does not have that normal 100% processing power, processing capacity to be able to handle the day-to-day -day stresses and strains that you experience in daily living, let alone the ability to just simply stand upright. Now, let's then have a little look to tell you the story and explain what happens here. So, as we said, you start life at 100% bandwidth. But when you have the accumulation, like unpaid compounding interest, what it does is it slowly starts to accumulate the amount of stress that's going on in your body. And what that does is that slowly diminishes your body's processing capacity. And these are made up numbers here, at least the first ones. And then later, later on, it's like, no, these are real numbers. But the first one, let's consider the example of a 10% reduction in your body's processing capacity. Now, 10% may not seem like very much. I mean, let's use that example of the road that we just said. Okay, you normally had six total lanes of traffic, but now you're reduced down to two. You know, if you're not doing too terribly much, it's like two in the morning, that's not going to be a problem. But if you are trying to do a lot more stuff in your day-to-day -day life, the equivalent of rush hour traffic, eight in the morning and then five o'clock at night, you better believe that there's going to be a very, very pronounced kind of problem under those circumstances. And this is going to matter because as it relates to balance kinds of issues, the balance disorder, again, whatever you choose to call it, this is the effect. This is the symptom. This is not the primary cause because what a lot of times what people want to do is they want to know the name for their balance condition. What type of vertigo do I have? What type of dizziness do I have? That's the symptom. That's like trying to say, okay, how do we decrease the amount of traffic on the road at rush hour without under, or addressing what the underlying cause is? Why is it that traffic is narrowed down to just one lane either way when it normally should have been three. So it's important that we never lose sight, we never confuse cause and effect in this particular case. But let's go back now and we'll talk about a 10% decrease in your body's, in your brain's processing capacity. And this again can be the accumulation of stuff that's going on in the background. I repeat, 99.99995% of all the stuff that's going on in your brain and your body that's taken away from your bandwidth is unconscious. You are not aware of it until it starts to show up in your life. And the first way that it typically shows up would be the equivalent as if you have been operating on two hours of sleep for a solid week. What are you going to feel? You're going to feel lethargic. Your brain's not quite going to be operating as sharp. 
as it otherwise would. In fact, you're probably going to be a little bit moodier. You're going to be a little bit more irritable. You don't have the normal zest. There's going to be a certain, I don't know what's wrong with me. Something's just feeling off. I'm having an odd day. I'm having an odd week. I'm having an odd month. And that's unfortunately what people usually just put these things down to. They say, oh, I'm just experiencing too much stress. Well, maybe that's part of what it is. Yeah, maybe you have a little bit too much things going on because it's rush hour time and of course the roads are going to be busy. But it's also possible here, especially if these symptoms are perpetuating over a long period of time and you don't have the reasons why you should be feeling stressed, but you're still experiencing these kinds of issues that your bandwidth has actually been decreased. This is the earliest warning sign before something actually starts to show up that's going to affect your sense of balance. Now, if you ignore it long enough, and that 10% now becomes 15%, all right, where is it going to show up? Well, it's going to show up in your overall general sense of well-being. You're still going to be able to do and do all the things that you need to in the course of a day, but you're probably going to notice that they're starting to get harder. And this may not necessarily be walking, running, working. Certainly it can show up in any of those places, but it can show up in your flexibility, your ease of movement, your recovery, any number of different things like that. And unfortunately, what a lot of times people do is they put it down to, I'm just getting older. There's not really too much that I can do about that. So the first level, we're saying that it's just stretch, or excuse me, stress. We're putting it off like that's not the issue. And now we're talking about, okay, it's starting to affect your body functions in certain ways, but you're putting it down to getting older when not necessarily that's the case. Again, it's that level of stuff that's accumulating and what it's doing, it's taking away from your bandwidth. Now, if you take it down a step farther and now you've lost about 25% of your brain's processing capacity in that bandwidth, now it starts to become even more evident. This is where people start to experience the little odd bits and pieces in terms of their body functions. This is going to be immune system. This is going to be your cardiovascular system. This is also going to be, again, because it's typically going to show up in a part of your body that normally you don't have to put any thought toward because it's happening in the unconscious realm. But now it's starting to show up in the conscious area. You start to have a little bit of balance issue. You start having a little bit of pain in parts of your body that you never really used to have before. Again, a lot of times people put it down to too much stress or they put it down to getting older where it's like, no, that stress is still accumulating and your body's resilience, the ability to be able to handle the day-to-day -day kinds of stuff is actually getting diminished. You're confusing cause and effect in this particular case. Still, many people don't act on this. Why? Because if they do go to their doctor or they start, you know, trying to see what's going on here, they think, oh, it's coming and going. It must not be that severe. Yeah, I can live with this. But it's when a person's total bandwidth has actually been reduced by about 50%. That's the point usually where people experience some sort of a crisis. They experience either a major episode or it's now gotten to the point that it is severely debilitating and affecting your day-to-day, -day, the stuff that you really want to do, whether that's spending time with family, spending time with friends, doing your social occasions, doing your exercise, showing up to work the, the way that you want, or you start missing out on any number of other kinds of things, your travels, your ability to just do and enjoy the things in life that matter most to you. And again, a lot of times have people have the tendency to think, okay, I need to look at those things that have happened to me very, very recently without considering the possibility that you've had the accumulation of the mental, the chemical, and then the physical sources of stress and strain. And that's actually what's led you to this particular point of crisis. So that's the story of bandwidth, that over periods of time, we have things that take away from our 100%. And yeah, provided that we just sleep and we don't do anything, the equivalent of driving your car at two in the morning, you're not going to have too much to compete with. But if you want to be living an active, a fulfilling, a joy-filled life, doing all the things that you want to do, 
you only have this much capacity, this much bandwidth available to you because you didn't realize it's been lowered to that point. And if you want to be able to do this much, those resources, simply put, are not there. And because the vestibular system, your balance system is so important in terms of your ability to function as a human being, that is actually one of the very most common areas that it's going to show up. Why? Because it's so sensitive, but also because your brain demands so much information and requires so much energy to be able to process it all of that. You know, a lot of times people who come into my practice, they feel when they experience vertigo or a balance disorder that, you know, they're the only person who's experiencing this. And part of what I'm sharing in this particular video, for those of you who are watching, is it is a far more common issue than people believe, whether it's practicing in Australia, whether I'm practicing here in the United States. It is an obscenely common issue. In fact, probably one of the most common conditions that people come to my practice for in the very first place. And as much as we wish, as much as I wish that it was just a matter of snapping the fingers and boom, we're doing this therapy and everything's going to be completely fixed. Uh -uh -uh. There's two parts to it. The first part is finding out what is the actual cause of your decreased bandwidth. So is it just a matter of stress? And if that's the case, very often it can be because there's some kind of processing going on that affects how your brain is thinking. You have learned something that is not true and what it's doing is it is stealing your bandwidth. Not unlike the computer that's got too many programs running on it all at once. It's also possible that it's a chemical source of accumulated stress, not unlike having malware or a virus on your computer. Your computer still has the same processing capacity and power, but there's something going on in the background, and in this case, it's affecting your physiology in a way that it's slowing and congesting. It's stealing all of your resources, and that's the reason for it. But then the third possibility is because at some point in the past, you had a physical injury that maybe didn't break, maybe didn't dislocate anything, but what it's doing is it's affecting your body in such a way that it's creating neurological tension. And not unlike a surge protector, what it's doing is it is physically dampening the signal to the point where your bandwidth is actually diminishing over a period of time. And this is actually one of the things that the upper part of the neck is so involved with. Not only are the muscles that support the vertebrae in your upper part of your neck laden with neural receptors that are terribly important for balance, vision, hearing, and equilibrium, but if you have tension in that particular area, it's going to have a direct impact on neurological function to those parts of your brain that are pro uh, responsible for processing that information in the first place. And if that is going on, the problem that people can experience with regards to their balance may have nothing to do with their inner ear. And it may not have anything necessarily to do with their brain function either. It may have everything to do with the mechanical problem in the neck that's actually diminishing the bandwidth. So the first thing is we've got to figure out which among those three categories are we actually dealing with. And then the second one is if it is a problem that's actually coming from right up here, what do we need to do about it in order to reduce that tension so that your body can actually heal and reverse that kind of bandwidth uh, loss? So a lot of times people, they unfortunately believe, oh, this is something I just have to live with. There's nothing that I can do about it. You know, there's a difference between what's our chronological age, that is the physical age that we are, and what's known as our biological age. So a person might be 40 years old, but they may have the biology of a 50-year-old if they're not taking good care of themselves. They could also have the biology of a 20 or a 30-year-old if they're doing all of the right kinds of things. And that, again, relates to what we're saying with the bandwidth. Just because we can't change your chronological age, if you can identify not what the effects are, but what the cause is, of those things that are taking away your bandwidth, you can actually increase your bandwidth back toward whatever is your 100%
genetic and anatomical potential. Now, granted, you may never be able to get all the way back to 100%, but every percent that you can actually increase your bandwidth, not only does that mean that it takes more stress, more aggravation before you do start to experience symptoms, but it means then that many of those symptoms can actually start to dissolve away as if they were never there. So what's important to take away from here is that symptoms, as unpleasant as they can be, that they are the body's warning sign. They are warning us that we have reached the point of crisis. We need to do something about it. But what's also important for people to understand is that you can actually do something about it. It does not have to be your lot for the rest of your life. It doesn't always mean that it's going to be easy. It doesn't always mean it's going to be straightforward. But if you can identify what that underlying cause is, you can go a very long way to improving your overall quality of life and being able to find a way to increase your bandwidth, again, so that those types of conditions, including those balance disorders, do not need to be dictating or controlling your quality of life. You can do, you can enjoy the things that you really want to if you're willing to do the things that are necessary in order to get you well. So I hope that that little story there has kind of clarified a little bit in terms of, you know, how and why is it that people can go on to experience balance disorders, not necessarily from anything in the recent past. Yes, there can be episodes, chemical, mental, and physical stress that was the catalyst that put you over the edge. But the vast majority of the time, what it is, is again, it's that accumulation of those things that occur over weeks, months, years, sometimes even decades. And even if you can't undo the damage, if you can increase that bandwidth again, you can significantly improve the quality of your life. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do click the like and subscribe button. Why? Because that helps the algorithm so that other people are able to find this information and find the answers that they're looking for as well. Number two is if you've got friends or family members who you think need to kind of check out this video, please do share it with them. And last but certainly not least is if what we've said here has struck a chord with you and you're thinking, okay, there might be something to this. I'm experiencing some issues, but I've not considered that it's possibly my neck that's actually the, the cause here. We'd like to hear from you. So what you do is you go to our website, which is drjeffreyhanna.com. You'll have all kinds of other videos, all the kind of blog articles, just like this one here, that talk a little bit about what we do. And there's an email that uh, you can fill out there as well. It goes direct to me. I'd love to hear from you. Have a little chat. See if there's something that we can do to help you out. If you're in the Spokane area, then what you would do then, if you're interested in more, you would go to our clinic, which is clearchirospokane.com, or you can call to make an appointment at 509-385-8166. And if you're not in the Spokane area, don't worry, you can go to BlairChiropractic.com and that way you'll be able to find somebody who does this exact same kind of work in an area close to you. Thanks for watching this. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic Spokane. Till next time, get well, live well, stay well. Take care. Bye-bye.